copper stain with my red white. I've been staring at the fire. Keep on looking at the time. I'm waiting on you. You know any more of it? Eu vejo na música Into My Life uma coisa quase que exclusiva do Brasil, porque é uma música que só fez sucesso aqui. Ela traduz muito bem essa relação particular que o Colin Hay tem com o nosso país, porque ela fez sucesso somente aqui, o público dele no resto do mundo não a conhece tão bem quanto a gente conhece, e muita gente aqui no Brasil não sabe que ela só fez sucesso aqui. Então é uma música tão conhecida que todo mundo imagina que mundialmente ela fez um sucesso enorme. Mesmo o Colin Hay não a toca nos shows, fora do Brasil e aqui ele não consegue fazer um show sem tocar essa música. Brasil was the only country where Into My Life was a hit. I think it was, you know, almost as as, as big a hit as any of the Men at Work songs. And so that was very uh, pleasing for me because I, I believed in the song. Eu lembro quando eu toquei essa música por primeira vez em Brasil. As pessoas ficaram mais enlouquecidas que se fosse Down Under. But when it came out in different other other parts of the world, it just it didn't didn't really generate anything. I think it was on a I think from what I've been told, it was on a a soap opera I think in in, in Brazil, which I think uh, which made, which which really helped its its success. Rainha da sucata. Sei. Dá um beijo na pessoa que está do lado. Pois é, mas como não tem ninguém aqui na minha esquerda, não tem ninguém na minha direita. Eu vou dar um beijo na pessoa que tá na minha frente. Quando eu comecei a sair com Colin, um dos primeiros discos que eu estudei foi Wayfaring Songs, para aprender a cantar com ele e como ele e frasear como ele. Perguntei para ele e por que você escreveu essa canção? E aí ele me contou a história da canção de uma menina que eu conheço, que eu adoro. E eu fiquei um pouquinho cimenta, sabe? It was a very dark time for me. It was at the end of the 80s and uh, you know, I was I was struggling a little bit. I was seeing somebody at the time, this girl. E quando ele começava, eu olhava ao Cole no palco e eu assim, <risos> Ah, eu was fazendo caras para ele, ele morto do riso, sabe? Porque ele sabia que era eu atuando como que estava sem ciumenta, não? It was all to do with with uh, large, dangerous uh, amounts of alcohol during that during that period of my life. E quando eu ganhei o CD Brasil 96 ao vivo, tinha lá a presença da música Into My Life. Comecei a me perguntar, né? nossa, mas essa música não era do Minute Work, não estava nos outros CDs que eu tinha. Não é deles, mas estava lá, a composição de Colin Hay. E foi aí que eu comecei a pesquisar sobre a carreira solo dele e descobri que essa música né, havia sido lançada no segundo álbum solo dele, Wayfaring Sons. E que a primeira vez que ele tinha vindo ao Brasil foi no Rock in Rio, no segundo Rock in Rio, em 1991, quando essa música estava estourando de sucesso. Into my life. Into my life. E depois, pesquisando mais ainda a fundo, né, descobri que a primeira vez que o Manetwork deveria ter vindo ao Brasil era em 1985, em janeiro de 1985, no primeiro Rock in Rio. Né? E exatamente em dezembro de 84, faltando um mês para começar o Rock in Rio, foi anunciado que ia ter uma substituição, porque a banda Manetwork tinha brigado, os integrantes brigaram entre si, a banda tinha acabado, aí não vinha mais. E acabou o meu sonho. Well, that was the end of the band. Man at Work was really over um, long before that, but we just didn't realize it. The first two albums, Business as Usual and Cargo, were with the five of us, you know, and then when uh, after that, the end of 1983 into, into 1984, uh, Jerry and John, uh, the bass player and, and drummer, were sacked from the band, got fired, and so that left the three of us, and 
then during the recording of Two Hearts, uh, Ron left. And then when uh, Two Hearts came out and didn't really, you know, didn't really do very much uh, in, in the marketplace, uh, Greg had had enough. And so there was really no band. It was done. It was over. So you know, there was no there was no point in going on. So I think that the the whole tour that we had planned got cancelled. We were finished as a band. You know, I always had the dream of of creating a band, and and I did. I was you know largely responsible for the creation of the creation of Men at Work, and um, you know there was a lot of sadness connected to the band. You know, it just didn't didn't really go the way I thought it was going to go. It was a real disappointment in the end. You know. Então não houve essa primeira vinda do Man Network ao Brasil e seis anos depois foi quando o Colin Hay veio se apresentar no Rock in Rio 2, em 1991. Vamos ver, Colin Hay. Jerry Hale on, on fiddle and mandolin and Robert Dillon on drums and Paul Gadsby on bass. It was really um, a small band and we You know, we did the best job we could have. It was a great, you know, honor to, honor to play there. There was uh, my band and then there was um, Joe Cocker and Prince. That's who played that night. My memory of it was that uh, the audience received us very well. E foi acho que uma das noites mais emocionantes da minha vida. Então, em 1996, quando o Colin Hay já havia lançado quatro álbuns solo, já estava praticamente há 10 anos né, sem tocar como Man at Work, eles resolveram se reunir para fazer uma turnê pelo Brasil que gerou um álbum ao vivo gravado aqui. Foram três shows em São Paulo onde foram gravadas essas músicas. Aí na segunda noite eu tive o privilégio de entrar no, no camarim, conversei com o Colin Hay, conversei com o Greg Hunt, bati foto. Uma experiência inesquecível. Né? Os grandes sucessos da banda e também estava lá a Into My Life. I was I had a great friendship with Greg, Greg Ham, and we we used to have dinners whenever I was back in Melbourne. We had four very very old friends. We would have dinner together. Greg and myself and two other old friends. This was in 96. At the end of the dinner, uh, Greg said, let's go on tour. I said, really, you want to go on tour? He said, yeah, let's go on tour. I said, well, where would we go? And he said, I don't know. Um, I don't know where. I don't know where, but let's let's go on tour. And then uh, 20 minutes later, um, the phone went um, and Greg answered the telephone. And it was a friend of mine, friend of ours, friend of mine who used to manage me, a guy called Michael McMartin who used to manage, who still does, manage the, the Hoodoo Gurus. He had been to Brazil. He had a, a relationship with, uh, with these uh, Brazilian promoters. These Brazilian promoters were sitting around one night, around the same time, and they said to each other, let's try and get men at work to tour in Brazil. And one of them said, no, no, you can't do that because they've broken up. They don't exist anymore. And the other guy said, well, I, I bet you I could get them to tour. He said, oh, I'll bet you And they had our bet. I don't know how much the bet was for that they could get us to tour. And so they called Michael McMartin, who was the contact they had, and he called us. He said, listen, do you want to go to Brazil to tour? And, you know, 20 minutes before that, Greg and I had had the conversation about going on tour. So we said, yeah, sure. Men at work. Men at the war. from a man in Brazil. What does he think? He has many characteristics. Iguais entre Austrália e Brasil. Uh, both the most, uh, beautiful women in the world. Olha aí, galera! Austrália e Brasil! Did you, did you come back with the band just for playing some gigs here in Brazil? Well, we started just to play some gigs to see, just to see how it felt. After 10 years, why Brazil? Why not? Well, we wanted to come to Brazil. Brasil! 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 
Em 97, o Alma Network voltou para o Brasil para divulgar então o álbum ao vivo que estava sendo lançado, né? Fizeram vários shows também, apareceram muito na televisão. The boys are back in Brazil. Uh, yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, it's good to be the king, you know. I, I thought to myself, uh, there is no way if I'm in Brazil and I'm taking a penalty, I cannot miss. Because if I do, I would never be able to show my face again. <laughs> Well, Brazil's a very uh, unique country to tour in because um, the audiences are are very musical. So it's a combination of, of a musical audience and a football crowd, you know, because they all seem to be as one. They would start a, a, a crowd a chant, which seemed to come out of nowhere, as it does often in, in, in when you go to see a football match. adora o público brasileiro. Ele sempre falou o público do Brasil é extraordinário. Todo o público é lindo. As mulheres são incríveis. Os homens são ah! There was a great there was a great love for the band uh, that I felt from the audience. It wasn't without kind of a certain amount of, you know, sadness for me because it was celebrating something which was from the past. And I had a great friendship with Greg and we would hire different people to play with us. It was exciting because we had never been to Brazil before and we were playing to audiences who had never seen us before. So that was good. But for me personally, it was like nostalgic to me. It was something from the past. Our great moment, if you like, had been in 1982, 1983. And so anything you do from that point on is, you know, replicating, it's reproducing something which was, not something which is. And so whilst it was exciting for the audiences and we had a good time, for me personally, I was always thinking, okay, well, this is, this is cool. But I was always wanting to move on and try and create new music. And even although it may not ever be as commercially successful as men at work. Creatively speaking, you have to just keep moving forward because those moments that you have, which are brilliant moments or great moments, they can't really be replicated. You know, they, those things only happen once. And you know, maybe they only happen once in your life. But the thing that, that remained through that was, was my friendship with Greg. <laughs> And also, I thought, you know, we had we had something more creatively to say. The only real difference between a solo project and a Men at Work project was uh, Greg's involvement. I was always trying to involve Greg in the uh, in the songwriting process and the production of a new music. I've been working on uh, this song uh, with my partner Greg Ham. Um, I don't really know what for. It's probably for an album of kind of some old songs and, and most most new songs. He wasn't very available creatively during that time, you know. He was struggling a bit, so it was difficult to create new music. We were in different countries. It was very difficult to get that together. So it was a great sadness for me, but it never happened. It just never happened like that. No comecinho do ano 2000, é, o Man Network voltou para o Brasil para fazer mais alguns shows em algumas cidades litorâneas. Nessa turnê, o Colin Ray cantava é, a terceira estrofe de Overkill em português. É 
muito curioso porque tem muito a ver com ele ter conhecido a Cecília Noel, que veio se tornar a esposa dele. Cecília fez a tradução, minha esposa, Cecília, porque ela fala inglês, ela fala she speaks German, ela she speaks espanhol, ela she speaks português. E ela aprendeu a falar português de cantar brasileiros songs. Como o Colin Rey estava vindo muito para o Brasil, né, com o Network, eles resolveram fazer essa homenagem para o público brasileiro. Ele queria também ter, ter uma parte em português e me pediu se eu podia fazer a tradução. Então aí eu escrevi também, porque eu escutava que a música Overkill sonaria muito lindo em português também. Tá tudo bem demais. I love how é, português, o idioma de vocês é tão lindo para cantar. Foi na época dessa turnê de 2000, fevereiro de 2000, eu me lembro até hoje, que eu lancei o meu site. Pouquíssimo tempo depois, meses, eu fiz contato com a Cecília Noel. Também fiz o primeiro contato com o Colin Rey. Em setembro de 2001, que eu fui lá para os Estados Unidos, fui para Los Angeles e fui recebido lá pelo Colin Rey, pela Cecília. Fui a alguns shows, é, trabalhei para o Colin Rey vendendo CDs num festival. <música> Então a próxima vez que o Colin Rey veio para o Brasil, depois que eu o conheci, foi em outubro de 2004. Eu fui contratado por um dos promotores da turnê brasileira para trabalhar na produção de alguns shows dessa turnê. Foi muito legal porque eu fui para algumas cidades que eu nunca tinha ido no Brasil, juntamente do Colin Rey. Eu me lembro que a gente estava em Goiânia para pegar o voo para ir para Brasília, se eu não me engano, e aí ele sentou comigo e me perguntou é, qual música que eu achava que estava faltando no, no repertório do show, imagina. Aí eu sugeri, eu acho que Everything I Need ainda não estava sendo tocada, que foi uma música que fez também muito sucesso aqui em 1985, e aí eu sugeri que ele colocasse no próximo show, já estavam tocando Everything I Need, então foi muito legal, assim, de certa forma, é, interferir né, no, no repertório do show. Em 2007, Colin Rey voltou para o Brasil novamente, e eu tive a grande honra de abrir o show dele com a minha banda, com a Rock Estrada. The audiences here are always the best. It's always, it's always fantastic to come to Brazil and play, play because the audiences are the, I think are the, you know, among the best in the world. Em 2011, o Colin Rey veio pela última vez até o momento. Né, foi a última turnê dele no Brasil, a sétima vez que ele esteve aqui. O Colin Rey já fez vários shows no Brasil. A expectativa do público é para um show cheio de novidades. Mas o que não pode faltar são os grandes sucessos de Men at Work. É sempre gratificante e frustrante ao mesmo tempo. Gratificante porque é sempre uma audiência positiva, mas ruim porque eles só conhecem o Men at Work. Mas é bom para mim, que tento tocar novas canções sempre. E aí ele fez alguns shows, eu acompanhei alguns shows também nessa época. Thank you to everyone for coming to the shows and thank you to Carlos for looking after us here in Brazil. Te adoro, Carlinhos. Ele me avisou que seria a última vez que ele viria para o Brasil. Touring in Brazil is tricky for me because my band, Men at Work, or me personally, or it's not like we're, you know, a big band anymore. But we're not a small band. We're kind of somewhere in the middle because um, sometimes it's a bit of a crapshoot. It's unpredictable as far as which promoters you get to to work with. You know, and whilst the, the promoters may have the best of intentions, it often ele tem muitos fãs no Brasil, ele é uma pessoa muito querida. E acho que os fãs do Brasil merecem pelo menos mais uma passagem dele aqui. O Brasil é lindo. O Brasil é como... O Brasil nos levou ao seu coração todos os anos. Então, eu tenho sentimentos muito bonitos sobre o Brasil. Eu tenho realmente experimentado nada mas amor e amor quando eu estive lá. Eu realmente amo ir lá e acho que as pessoas são fantásticas. Obrigado muito, muito. Eu tive um grande time jogando para você. Eu agradeço.
Durante a produção desse documentário, a música Into My Life não estava disponível nas plataformas digitais no Brasil, porque o álbum Wayfaring Songs, onde ela foi lançada originalmente, não está disponível nas plataformas no mundo inteiro. E o álbum ao vivo do Minitwork Brasil, onde ela foi regravada, não está disponível no nosso país. Então, durante a entrevista com Colin Hay, eu sugeri que ele gravasse uma nova versão de Into My Life. Se você algum dia quiser gravar um vídeo video playing essa song, we, we won't uh, get mad about it. We're gonna love it. Brazil is gonna love it. Yeah, I, I had really thought of that, but I could I could record an acoustic version of that. That wouldn't be bad. I I, I haven't really thought about that, but yeah, I, I could, I'll have a think about that. E como você viu aí? Ele aceitou a ideia, gravou e lançou uma nova versão de Into My Life que está disponível para todos os fãs, em especial para nós do Brasil, que gostamos tanto dessa música. The cop is staying with my red wine I've been staring at the fire I keep on looking at the time I'm waiting on you I can hear the howling wind Yes, the sound is getting higher As the night is closing in I'm waiting on you Those big black eyes A wicked smile that you flash as you Into my life Into my life Into my life Won't you come in and sit right down Here let me pour a starlit schneier Why is it when you come around I'm waiting on you Drink until we get too tired Even though you try to dance for me I still can't light up your fire So I'm waiting on you From time to time I feel so blind And there's still so much more Into my life Into my life Into my life All right. Into my life Into my life Into my 